Savage strength training height. Welcome back grasshopper now in the video as you can see I'm doing something called I like to call them tire walks You can call this bear hug walks the whole trick for this tire walk bear hug walk is to build your grappling strength now as you can see I'm holding the tire I'm clutching it it in really tight and I'm walking with it this helps to build all of the back side of you so when you're holding it holding this tire the tire in here is about 200 pounds it's about 180 but I stuffed it with those 20 pound slam balls just one of them just to make it a little heavy now when I clutch it in tight this helps to build that lat muscle the arms the forearms to keep it in locked in place as I'm walking with it, I got to stay upright. So that's building my lower back, my hamstrings. As I'm walking, it's building my legs. This is extremely good for a lot of you grappling athletes. Now, for my returning subscribers, I am extremely thankful and grateful for you. There's been so much comments. I'm so sorry if I haven't replied to your comment. I'm trying to get to them all. Um, just know I appreciate you. From the bottom of my heart, I hope that you're having a great day. I hope my little Christmas village back here is bringing some light to your life. Hi, hi, hi. Us. Now, for my returning subscribers, you guys already know I'm really into. You guys see the jump roping, the shadow boxing, a lot of the body weight training. Before I did odd object savage strength training, everything was. Body weight training. But after I was done fighting, I really wanted to expand my horizons. I opened up a little strength and conditioning gym. Just a little facility. It wasn't a storage facility. And I just had a bunch of big tires with kegs. Not too many weights. I had this beam you could do pull-ups on. It was warehouse shelving. Um, I used to work in a warehouse. And we used to bang out pull-ups on the shelving that held the pallets. And when I opened up my gym, it was a legit business when I opened it up. Um, I remembered the warehouse shelving. I contacted a place that supplies warehouses on Hawaii with the shelving. Called them up. They sold me a little rack. Boom. We bang out pull-ups on the beam. It really helps to build the grip. Because it was a beam, it's not a bar. So you got to hold it like this. And you got to do pull-ups. You're not gripping. So just to hold it like this really helped build the forearms of myself. All of my, I don't want to call them clients, but the people I trained, my family. They ended up becoming my family. But at the time when I had my gym, I was CrossFit certified. I had my fighting experience. I got into odd object lifting from a mentor of mine. He lives, he lived on Oahu. Um, he had a strength and conditioning gym. He trained a lot of, uh, a lot of the MMA fighters that were coming out of Hawaii. He had a bunch of them. He trained a lot of football players. Very prestigious, hardcore gym. He was just producing animals. And their style of strength, strength training was all Odd object lifting, almost like strongman, but at a very high rep. And he had very, a lot of different variations. And I emailed him, he took me under his wing, and he passed on a lot of knowledge to me. So now I'm passing it on to you. That tire walk was something I kind of got from him. He would do it with kegs filled with water. We would do it with kegs too, but there was a time when a lot of my clients, they couldn't pick up a fully loaded keg. So we would do it with a tire. You know, you pick up a keg and you're sweating. I mean, after just doing rounds of carrying it, if you're not conditioned to handle it, dude, you could drop it. And it, it's a full keg. You drop it on your toe or something, you're done. As you can see with the, the video, I'm wearing uh, boots. The things we're doing, you got to be wearing steel toe boots, all right? But with the tire walks, as I said, it really helped with the grappling a lot of the clients that i was training they were into they were brazilian jiu-jitsu competitors so on the free time 
we would do a lot of, I would grapple with them. I would go to their um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school. I got to jump in with them. Their, uh, their coach was extremely nice, invited me in. They would thank me, like, oh, thank you for um, doing the strength and conditioning for my guys. Whenever you want to roll, you can come for free. I was like, okay, I'm game. I was getting twisted up. Mind you, I already had my fighting experience, but I never really dove into gi. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with gi. Everything I did was MMA geared. So a lot of it was no gi. So once I got the gi on, I was getting twisted up, man. These guys were strong. So when I was doing solo training, I needed to find ways to strengthen me so I could keep up. Those tire walks really help. Now, you guys see the background, as I said, bodyweight training, purely just striking, boxing, kickboxing. When I got into mixed martial arts, grappling was extremely hard for me. I was thinking that, you know, when I'm on top, the guy puts his guard on. I'm going to just rail down on him. It doesn't work like that. I was so... As a boxer, I'm used to really being upright, using my feet to generate power. So when I'm on the ground on my knees and I'm trying to develop that power to just stroke it in, it's easy for a ground guy to sweep me because I'm not used to being on my knees and trying to keep everything close. So what happened was my style of grappling for mixed martial arts when I'm based on my knees like this and I'm upright, I didn't have balance. So I had to devise a way where I would hold in tight with my upper body. Okay. So when a guy would pull guard on me, I would kind of just put my head on his chest, wizard in arm, hold it in tight. And from there, I could stroke in my shots. I'll make a video on uh, restrictive training. So everything for me was tight. In the guard, and I could throw my shots, wizard that arm, throw the shots, wizard that arm, throw the shots. And at the same time, as I would wizard, wrap, trap one arm. If you don't understand Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or grappling tech terminology, wizard is kind of like when you just lock one arm down, you trap it. I was the type where I like to be upper body heavy. I lay my upper body on my opponent, trap one arm, and throw the shots in. As I'm throwing the shots in, I'm opening the bottom part. I'm using my legs to kind of come around. And I use my upper body, my head, and all of my upper body strength to kind of distract him to um, advance positions from in his guard, soften him up a little bit, open up his guard, come to a half guard, move to side mount, then full mount. When I got to full mount, same thing. I kind of hold him in close, and I'll just wait for an arm. Uh head and arm triangle, whatever. Because I was a striker, I didn't I didn't have the balance of being on my knees and railing and like not being swept. So I had to play a lot of upper body dominant, come down and squeeze. Those tire walks that you see help to build that. And I Brazilian Jiu Jitsu really helped me out, but I really got into um Catch as catch can wrestling for my type of personality. Catch as catch can really caught me for the grappling, just all the trapping and just that really dirty, tight type of wrestling. A lot of um, go go platas where you put the shin on the throat and you just squeeze it in, can openers, a lot of like neck cranks, wrist cranks, a lot of kind of like tight strength. Once even though we're like, you see the hands. Once I kind of get you here, if I catch you in like a clinch or I'm like, we're, you know, we're wizarding in and I suck you in tight. For me, this is like my game. I, I love that close. You could be banging me out. Once I trap an arm, I'll pull you in and I'll use my head and I'll suck you in tight and I'll just whoop, whoop and keep pulling on your arm and keep like jamming my head into your shin. Those tire walks help to build that for me, all right? So when it comes to the savage strength training, bear hug walks, that tire walk you see really help to develop that tightness of upper body. In order for the tire to stay up, 
I got to hold it in like this. You see how everything is tense? Now just think, if I'm in your guard and I grab the back of your head and I pull you in, dude, you're not going to be able to get out. <laughs> okay? Because I've trained it. Same thing, the pull-ups really help to do that. Okay, that's my body weight training secret. I do a lot of, a lot of people say, oh, your pull-ups are crap form. Okay? I learned this from an arm wrestler and a lot of uh, judo guys, especially judo guys. We do a lot of short rep pull-ups. Why? Because you're never going to catch us like this. In grappling, this is a no-no. This is asking for your arms to be broken. When we do the pull-ups, when I do the pull-ups, okay? I'm not going to speak for every. I'll just speak on my experience. When I do the pull-ups, the chin-ups, I keep it right here. Why? When you go for an arm bar, dude, you can't pry this. I train to stay like this all the time. So when you, yeah, like I said, when you go from arm bar, it's not coming out. You can go one hand. It's not coming out. Same thing. If I grab behind your head, I wizard in, wizard in, and I grab behind your head, I can hold you here. And if I want, I can ooh, ooh, head back. Bing, bing, elbow, bing. <laughs> Getting all crazy over here. But that's why I like to keep the pull-ups tight. That tire walk, I keep it in tight. Lock it. Boom. Now, the thing about these tire walks is to bring it up, okay? I got to suck it in really tight. When I'm sucking it in tight, understand this 200-pound tire is squeezing against my chest. So I can barely breathe while I'm walking with this thing, okay? So that just creates that different type of strength. It's not like we're doing roll, pulley rolls. No, like for me to hold it like this and it's against my chest. Now I can, I can barely breathe and I'm waddling around. As you can see, dude, I'm walking and I'm wearing boots. I'm walking the type of strength. Understand when I clinch you down like this and I got to move around, I'm able to because I practiced it. I hold it in the tire and I can walk around. All right. So just with that one exercise, dude, we, I, me and my clients, I had a group of guys and ladies, they would do these type. I had a lady client. She was like 30. She was in her 30s at the time. I was in that video. I think I was 28. I was in, she was in her early 30s. She could pick that tire up and take a few steps and walk with it. Dude, I, I created some beasts, man. I don't, I don't want to post videos of them. A lot of my YouTube vids now, I don't want to like hype myself up, but they've been getting kind of a lot of views. I got to like reach out to them and just be like, are you all right with, you know, like thousands of people watching you carry this big ass tire? So I'll just put mine's. Um, I used to do the tire walks and what happens was, dude, my gym was just built on tires, kegs, and more tires, okay? I would get like little car tires, drill a hole in it, hole in it put that... um that eye beam, that eye bolt, it's like a circle with like threads and then put a nut at the end of it with the hole in to the tire and I would clip on those uh, like cliff hang hanger clips and put the toe strap, those yellow toe straps. We would put the toe straps around our neck or hold it like this and that would be like our sled. Just drag the tire on the ground. The tire was the size where I could put on 45 pound plates. So we would load that up. I didn't need a $300 sled. We're just dragging these tires on the gravel. Perfect. Didn't leave any scratches. Didn't make any crazy noises. Because it's just a tire that you're just dragging on the ground. All right. Of course, because it wasn't a smooth metal sled, it wasn't so forgiving. So just the tire, we would use uh, those mud buggers. They were like a good sized tire. Uh, those all-terrain tires with one forty-five plate dragging it for like 30 minutes. Dude, that was enough. You don't have to load this thing up because of the tire, just the rubber gripping the ground. You're going to get a lot of good work. So I would have the tire on, the strap, the toe strap with the tire with like three forty-five plates. And I would carry this big tire while I'm carrying it. I would be dragging this sled. Okay. So as like, the thing is pulling me back. I got to hold it forward. And it was just creating a different type of strength. All the muscles, every type of muscle had to kick in on top of just the cardio it takes. The lung capacity to just upkeep this tenseness and trying to walk with it. 
It was crazy. But the reason why I don't speak too much on this odd object lifting, like I said, you know, this knowledge was passed to me. When I got with my mentor and, you know, he gave me the game, I implemented these techniques with my clients. We could all do it fairly well. Yes, we had a hard time. Of course, you know, when you're doing anything new, you're not going to be so great at it. But we could catch on quick. And that's only because of my, my knowledge of bodyweight training. When I got into all this odd object, like picking up the tire like that, when I thought it in my head and I picked it up, I, I did it one crack. Like it, I didn't struggle. There was, I have another video. I've been looking for videos everywhere of uh, the gym that I had. I had everything on Facebook and I deleted that Facebook page like eight years ago and the videos are gone. Whatever I have now, I, those two videos I shared with you. There's a couple more. I got to ask some of the guys that um, I used to train. They probably had some videos. But I would have two truck guitars. I put two of them on top. They were like in combination, maybe like 600 pounds. I could flip two of them at one time. And I was like 160 pounds. I wasn't that big. I was maybe a little smaller than what I am now. That second bit of me walking with the tire, I'm bald. Dude, I was only like... 155 pounds that tire at the time like i said we put the slam ball in it it was like 200 pounds and like i'm just walking around with it but a lot of the strength to be able to do that came from the body weight training you know i made the post showing the picture of me carrying the tire one of the homies was like oh damn i gotta grab a tire now you do and you don't not necessarily all right everything i give you body weight training wise the body weight training just builds the awareness. When you're popping enough reps, short reps like this, short reps on push-ups, then you do long reps, oh, long reps on pull-ups, all the short rep body weight squats, jumping squats, tuck jumps. When you do it at a high amount, you're going to build such a high degree of body awareness that whatever you undertake, ballet, um, jazzercise, Strong man, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, me, lion dancing, boxing, jump rope, soccer, just the amount of body weight exercises. Because you're using your body to build your body, the type of body awareness that you get from it. Oh, I said singing. I don't know if you can hear, but the type of body awareness that you get from the body weight training will allow you to go into these different sectors. All right. So that's why. I don't preach too much about this odd object lifting. But all I'm doing is giving you knowledge and just opening up different avenues for you to express yourself. Okay. And at the time, I really wanted to just open my mind. And uh, my mentor helped me. He, he set some basic things in place with odd object lifting. Then from there, I had a fitness business, dude. Like it was my business to just sit down and just think of ways to make my clients stronger. So I got, I tried many things. Rock lift, deadlifting rocks. I would go out into uh, just different areas. We got like jungles in Oahu, right? You got to ask. I, I have like Hawaiian uncles that, you know, I ask before I take a rock use it to train with, they give me like special things to say, as long as I use it in a manner to strengthen others in a positive way, you know, I can use the natural elements to build ourselves up. In Hawaii, that's a big thing. You can't just be going around taking sand from the beach or like just taking rocks for decorations, all right? But I got the green light. Um, logs, a lot of times... Uh, the place where I had my gym, there were all there's like big trees. They would cut the trees, they would leave the logs. I'd be like, hey, can I take one of these logs? Carry logs, squat with logs. We would make sandbags. Um, like I said, you can't just be taking sand. So I buy I would buy sand from Lowe's and I would make like little it looked like like bricks. Okay. If you know what I'm talking about, just duct tape. So that way I could adjust it. It was like 20 pound bricks 
that I could adjust and I would put it in a big army duffel and we would just like sandbag shoulder it. Just an hour of like a 200 pound sandbag and just shouldering it down. Boom, left shoulder down. Then your partner goes boom, down, boom, down. Just building up that man strength, that savage you, all right? So with auto object lifting, another one, that tire you see me carrying, I would put handle like chains and I would get like big, thick PVC, not metal handles you use for plumbing. So I would chain it around the tire, put two chains, okay, and use two big handles. And we would like do farmer's walk with it. And on top of doing farmer's walk, I would strap the sled, that tire thing I told you about, the toe strap with the tire. Pick up the tire, and the tire's connected to the sled. The tire's already like 200 pounds, and you're pulling a tire, drag it on the ground with like 245 plates on it. Now you're just like, holy moly. Dude, put some chains on, do some farmer's walk, pull the sled, all kind of crazy stuff. So when it comes to auto object lifting, do your best to kind of understand what you're doing it for. The reason why I could propel so far in every training modality, bodyweight training, jumping rope, shadow boxing, odd object lifting, my son over here just playing with his toys. It's because there was an intent. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, daddy's almost finished with this video, right? So. <laughs> Doing my wushu karate on my son. You got to have the intent. When the intent is there, it's easy to gain results from anything. Okay? I don't want you to think that, oh, now I got to do odd object training. Now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. I want you as a martial artist, as a human being, to just find avenues to further express and build this body. Odd object training. For you guys that like to be extremely aggressive and like really tight and just really, I think the Irish call it a collar and bone or something, uh, the type of uh, wrestling. I really like that type of uh, old school catches catch can, rough and tumble. So there was a guy named Farmer Burns. They would do a lot of like, uh, back in the day, do a lot of like, what we were doing, auto object lifting, like lifting up these big barrels, wheelbarrow stuff, just to strengthen the body for wrestling. Now he's playing with his fire truck. <laughs> Please excuse me. I'm going to let my son just have his fun while daddy is over here passing the game to you, right? But whatever modality you get in, you got to have an intent. The tire walks really helped my way of play. Same thing with the short rep pull-ups. People can tell me all day long, I saw your pull-up video. If you go through the comments, I don't want to like, you know, light them up. But if you look through some of the comments, all oh, your form is shit. And it's, I really don't care. Because I know like, when it's time for me to pass knowledge to you on why I do the pull-up the way I do, when I hold you here and you can't break this, you will understand and, you know, we can become friends after that. You'd be like, oh, Chaz, I understand now. And I'll be like, hey, it's okay. It's okay. You always hate what you don't understand. But when you come here and I hold you, oh, oh see? <laughs> Getting crazy. But as I said, you got to know the intent of what you're doing. The odd object lifting helped me and my clients. A lot of my clients, like I said, were Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitors that somehow had the same game as me. When they Once they grab the gi, they like to pull it in tight. They like to pull it tight with the legs, slowly use their blades. Same thing with all the lifting kegs, bear hugs, body weight training we did. Know the intent of the exercises that you are using, and that will help to build. Oh, he's strong. To build that savage strength that you're looking for to be a better martial artist. Man, woman, leader, parent, friend, all right? Take these tips. Let me know how it goes. If you have any questions more about odd object lifting, hit it in the comments below. And until next time, train hard and be kind. Let's go.